Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about graphic audiobooks and audiobooks. We're going to kind of talk about the difference between them when it comes to listening to the same story. So, as always, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and let's begin. So for this video, I want to talk about the difference between a regular audiobook and a graphic audiobook. And I want to kind of talk about it in context of the story I just finished because I am supposed to be reading, um, slash rereading Wolves of the Kala by Stephen King, but I got distracted because the last part of the graphic audiobook for the third book of the Super Powered series came out. So I wanted to finish that one because I because I had been listening to the graphic audio version, you know, little by little as it's come out over the last six months or so. So I wanted to finish that and it kind of got me thinking about the differences. So I wanted to talk about them here today. So, so let me start off by saying I really, really like the Super Powered series. It's a really, really fun fantasy, contemporary fantasy series that's really just a superhero fantasy series. It, um, it is very similar to My Hero Academia if you're familiar with it. It'll probably be a manga that I'll read on the channel because I... When I finish the show, I want to kind of read the manga to see the differences. But I think I might be far enough, far enough along in the show that I can go ahead and start the manga. So that might be a thing. Let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in a chapter-by-chapter, arc-by-arc reading of My Hero Academia discussed here on the channel. So yeah. Alright, I really like the series. I really like the superpowers. I really like how it works. And I like the way the story is told. So I find it really interesting to see the different versions of it. I don't have a physical copy of the books yet, so I can't say that I've read them yet, but I haven't um, read the physical copies yet, but I've listened to the Audible version and the graphic audio version. So, the Audible audiobook is done by Kyle McClarley. McClarley? I think I'm saying his name right, but I think he kind of has a leg up as a narrator. He's a great narrator, and he does all the characters brilliantly, but I think he kind of gets extra bonus points because or has a unfair advantage maybe, depends on how you wanna look at it, because he is also a voice actor. He has done characters on uh, Mob Psycho and um, various other animes and video games and things like that. So he is a um, consistent voice actor. So the fact that he can have one voice for one character and a very believable yet totally different voice for another character isn't, I mean, it's just as impressive, but it's not like, wow, oh my God, because he's a voice actor. He's He's like either discovered he had that ability and has, has honed it over years or, you know, something like that or has that ability because he trained to develop that skill over the time being a voice actor. But either way, I guess I, what I'm trying to say is it's not very surprising that he would be a great narrator for a story like this because he has such experience with voice acting. In fact, the Superpower series has to be one of my favorite examples to bring up when I'm talking about audiobooks to people because the skill that this man has with the ability to jump voices and give emotional inflection and like give all this kind of not on the page type information to the reader and to the listener is just masterful and I love it so much it has completely influenced the way I feel about the story it has influenced the way I see the story and the way I know these characters to the point where when I started listening to the graphic audio versions it completely like took me aback so this is the third book that I just finished so I've already listened to the first and second book graphic audio versions and the difference in the voices is jarring because um, Kyle will give, um, there's a character that's like a con man. He's a con artist. He grew up in Vegas and like mafia family and stuff. He gives him a voice that like plays all the, the smarmy snark, the arrogance and the confidence and stuff that that character has. He gives him a voice that plays a pitch perfect, utterly perfect. But then in the graphic audio, the voice actor that is doing that part has an overly innocent voice and like doesn't put the same inflections and things. So I'm assuming that's a directing choice and like just maybe, I don't know how directing for graphic audio and stuff works, I don't know. But I'm assuming somewhere along the line, someone kind of read the book and kind of misread that character a little bit because the voice doesn't really match the character. But by the time we get to the third book, that voice actor has adjusted themselves in such a way where it kind of feels more accurate to the character, or I've just gotten used to it. In my opinion, he's adjusted himself. I don't know the voice actor's name, sorry. 
but I think he's adjusted himself so he sounds more like this character. And then it happened like that with multiple characters. Again, I assume it's because I'm so used to Kyle McCarley's version of them that when there's these individual people speaking for these characters, it, it is very jarring because another character, Alice, who starts off as a cliche, typical princess character, um, grows into this very, very mature, very strong, assertive, amazing to read about, just fun character who's just this epic badass with like subtlety stuff, like um, social engineering kind of skills. She's really, really good at that. So it goes from this common kind of vain, almost Cher Horowitz from Clueless kind of sounding thing, except of course Cher is like smarter than she appears. But like, I mean, that's kind of the thing that we're going for with the character Alice too. So she has this spoiled, entitled princess kind of thing. And then as it goes, Kyle kind of adjusts her voice in such a way where you can hear the seriousness in her tone. You can hear her confidence. You can hear the character development. But in the graphic audio, we have this um, voice actor who has this very light, um, um, kind of effervescent almost voice that's just very kind of immature and just light. It, it works for um, the character before she gets her development, but as she develops, the voice doesn't change. She doesn't bring in the confidence to certain things she says. She doesn't bring in the snark or even the mild arrogance or anything like that. So it's just... It just doesn't sound like the character. It, it feels like you're losing some of the subtle development of the character because of the performance. So I think it's very interesting that that happens. And it wasn't as noticeable in the first two as it has become in the third one. So some of the real um, pros about graphic audio is the fact that graphic audio tends to add um, sound effects and music and stuff like that. So it really is like their tagline. It really does become like a movie in your mind. It is, for me at least, it is very much like the same experience of watching a movie minus the visuals. And I just really love it. I enjoy it so much. And half the time it really adds to it. Like with Stormlight or Mistborn and stuff, it adds to it very, very, like, completely. Like especially um, Words of Radiance when there's um, scenes where there's storms going on. It just really helps my immersion to be able to hear that rain, to hear the thunder and the lightning and all that stuff. I really love those additions and I think they work really well. Another one of the pros is that you have individual people speaking for the individual parts. So you can kind of get a very distinct voice for them because they are completely different voices. Because some regular audiobook narrator, narrators are not as good as people like Kyle McClarley and in creating very individualistic voices for the characters. So sometimes that can be hit or miss. So graphic audio has a lot of great benefits and when you compare graphic audio to regular audio, I think the graphic audio as far as entertainment and as far as just pure enjoyment of a story kind of has an edge because of all the extra stuff that I like, like the sound effects and the uh, music and things. But regular audio book has the advantage of being much closer to just a straight up version of the book because there's something else that happens in graphic audio because of all the extra sound effects and music and stuff they leave out some of the descriptors and sometimes when they do that it can ruin the scene so I want to talk specifically about a scene at the end of the third year of the Superpowered series. So spoilers for the finale of the third Superpowered book. I have a review of it on the channel and I'm sure we'll talk about it again later because apart from Stormlight, these are my favorite books. <laughs> um, at least my most enjoyed books, I suppose. No difference. Favorite, most enjoyed, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so the thing that happens at the end, right? It is very much like My Hero Academia. All these kids, they're going to a college. They are going to regular college. They're in regular college. But apart from their regular classes, they're taking hero classes so that they can be certified as heroes so they can go out and be superheroes. So um, the character that I mentioned before, that is a con man. He's from Vegas. He's a part of a mafia family. Back home, he had an enemy who is a part of another rival mafia family who basically followed him to California when they found out he was in California. And basically is trying to kill him because he's far enough away that there shouldn't be a lot of ramifications if he actually gets to do it. So they're continuing their battles that they had in Vegas in California, essentially. So because the um, guy from Vegas doesn't want to cause any blowback on his mafia family, he's trying to use local um, henchmen and things like that. So he ends up 
essentially hiring a terrorist organization that has much greater plans than what he was trying to do. So when all this stuff goes down, he essentially unleashes a full terrorist attack on this college campus. And they have a goon squad army type set of people that are like attacking people, blowing up buildings and like trying to kill the superhero professors and stuff like that and trying to expose the kids that are there trying to get their um, certification. So one of the students, one of the characters that we get to know over the course of the series, he has shadow manipulation abilities. So he can literally take your shadow, animate it, and turn it into blades and chop you up. So he's incredibly deadly, but he's a nice character. So, and his sister has kind of a similar ability. She can control light, and she can use light to um, basically make any sort of weapon out of light. So she, she can make anything made of like the super hard dense steel, but it's all sunlight and she can control it and stuff. So they've had like a rival situation going on. But in this battle, um, the character who can control uh, shadow blades and stuff named Shane, he ends up um, being confronted by one of the goons that were hired to go and attack everyone. And he hesitates for a half of a second. And then the guy gets ready to shoot him and he basically realizes he's hesitated, it's too late and he's about to die and he basically closes his eyes. But he's then saved by his sister because she creates a bunch of weapons and chops the guy up into pieces before he can kill her brother. So in the scene, um, short, right after he she kills the guy, he um, she basically has a shield manifested in front of him so that the bullets, if the guy got a shot off, it wouldn't actually hurt him. So when she drops the shield, he sees the carnage. He sees the body parts and all this stuff and just the mayhem she just unleashed on this guy. And she's such a cool character too. It's so fun. Um, she unleashed, She just completely turned him into just sushi, turned him into a pile of body parts and stuff. So when Shane, the character, sees this, he immediately pukes. So in the graphic audio, it just kind of goes... Um, um, like Shane looks over to the side and sees the carnage that Angela left behind and then he kind of like there's like the sound effect of him shuffling and he like and the, I know the descriptor so I know what's happening but he's basically he turns over and starts to vomit and instead of giving any sort of descriptors of the vomiting or the thing that he's going through you just get the sound effect so it's just puking sound effects or whatever and then um, after that, his sister, um, because he has been injured, he got shot before that in his leg, so he can't walk. She uses her power to manifest a huge gauntlet to carry him so that they can go find a healer. So in the graphic audio, you just kind of hear the sound of metal and then it like grasps. So you kind of hear the sound of the gauntlet moving and you hear it grasp him. And then the um, narrator says Shane looks down and sees that he's being held aloft by a floating gauntlet. So while that scene works and it has resonance in it, when it's compared to the regular audio slash regular book, it pales in comparison because the scene plays out exactly the same. The difference is the descriptors. So when that scene happens, it, we immediately go into Shane's mind where he's thinking about the fact that his sister just saved him. And then he's kind of thinking about this resentment that he has with her. It's not even really explicitly there. It's just something that's built up over the course of the story. So then it describes him vomiting. It describes the pain and the burning of the acid and like the feeling in his nose and just like the, the lightheadedness and stuff. You, you really are purely in his mind as he's experiencing this. And they describe like feeling the tightness around him as it like grabs him and stuff like that. So you get so much more description of what's going on. You're completely in his head and you're experiencing it with him as opposed to this near observation thing that graphic audio does. And it's a difference that I hadn't really noticed before, but like it is very, very obvious at this point. So uh, I, to the point where I had to go find the old um, <laughs> regular audio book and compare it to the graphic audio book <laughs> copy because I was like, this doesn't sound the same. It's not as good. So because of this reason, a lot of the stuff that happens at the end of this book is just simply not as enjoyable to me because the descriptors really allow me to plug myself into the mind of the character I'm reading about or listening about and to really experience the things through their eyes. And graphic audio kind of forces you to take a step back and leaves you as only an observer of these events, which I think is fascinating. And yeah, it's completely changed kind of how I see graphic audio. 
I know for a fact that graphic audio cannot just be a substitute for audio or just reading because while most audiobooks will make some slight edits or something to the way the words are written, they keep pretty much everything. Graphic audio edits it almost to the point of it being a pure adaptation. It is the closest to a movie adaptation before it's a movie adaptation. So it is purely adapted, so there are cuts and things. And I hadn't realized it before. So let me know in the comments down below. Did you Have you noticed this phenomenon before? Are you like a graphic audio and a regular audio listener? Let me know about it in the comments down below. And have you read Superpowers? If you have, let's talk about it. If you haven't, I'm just going to bring it up on the channel again. And I'm going to keep pushing it like a drug pusher <laughs> until I can get you guys to read it. So yeah, <laughs> let me know about that in the comments down below. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I will talk to you all next time. Peace.